from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Personally speaking, the books that shaped me the most, uh, again, starting when I was a child, were usually works of historical fiction. And they helped me understand the past, and they helped me understand that the past is not just about facts and figures and dates. It's about human beings making choices, and then we have the luxury of looking back and seeing the results of those choices. So I grew up reading books like uh, The Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder, and that was my entree to the past and has really shaped my own career as a historical novelist. I think that uh, the books by Judy Bloom, especially Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, certainly shaped me. Uh, you know, they, they told the story of a kid who was a lot like me, and it was really realistic fiction. It didn't have, uh, you know, vampires or magic or anything like that in it, uh, but it spoke to me. It was the kind of reading I like to do, and now it's the kind of writing that I like to do. So I think books that, that hold a mirror up to a kid um, and, and teach them that it's okay to be uh, a little bit different uh, are very important books. For me, there were a few books, because I'm a, I'm a picture book author, so I have to go back to books that I loved as a, as a kid. And there was a, a series um, called Encyclopedia Brown that I, that I loved, and I would, could not wait for the next issue to come out, and I would run to the library and, and ask the librarian when it was going to come out and make sure I was there on that day to be the first one to sign it out. And that really started my love of books from then and turn books into something you're supposed to do in school and read to like this is this is something this is for me and then uh, other picture books there's a book called uh, The Stinky Cheese Man by Lane Smith and John Sheska which is just the most fantastic children's book ever written <laughs> and when and when I read that I realized that that was something I wanted to do I wanted to uh, to uh, write and illustrate children's books there are books of fiction like Thomas Pynchon's V, for instance, that completely opened up a new world to, to me. Um, and it had, it had an enormous influence as well. It's integrating uh, 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 history and, uh, and uh, current uh, style. I mean, it's just a beautiful book. Um, I grew up in a small town in Illinois, 50 miles south of Chicago. And we lived a block and a half from the public library the Kankakee Public Library, a Carnegie uh, endowed library with two black lions out front. And it's not too much of an exaggeration to say I spent a lot of my child, along with Cub Scouts and Little League, uh, in that library. And <coughs> I would lug home books that were too sophisticated for me to read, but just to have them in my hand meant something. And I can remember lugging home Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And then, <coughs> The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Those books by Mark Twain. And, I mean, I grew to love other books and I have just finished a, a large book about Ernest Hemingway. I came to Hemingway's writing later. I came to his life earlier. But to me, a book that shaped my own consciousness as an adult, uh, would be The Sun Also Rises, which is Hemingway's first published novel in 1926. 60,000 lyric words that um, I feel is uh, an indelible book, as long as books are going to be read, books of fiction. The book that shaped me the most was Snowy Day and Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats. It was the first time in publishing history that there was an African-American lead in the book. It shifted the whole world. It shifted my world and it's still shaking it now. Well, for me, the few books, I'll just, I'll just name two, although I, I, like I said, I had more. Uh, the first is Battle Cry for Freedom. Uh, and, and this is by James McPherson, a, a historian of the American Civil War, I think is, is a phenomenal book. And that really um, 
it, it drove me to want to do history. Uh, I first uh, worked on the American Civil War before I ended up switching over to the Vietnam War. Um, and so that book really had uh, you know, a big influence on me um, and that I think it's one that all Americans should read. Another book that had a, a very big influence on me is, is my uh, dissertation advisor, Strategies of Containment by John Lewis Gaddis. I think um, this book really tells a lot about um, the United States and its foreign policy during the Cold War uh, and is one of the best uh, pieces of scholarship in, in my opinion. I would say a lot of influence came from Maxine Hong Kingston's Woman Warrior. And I say that because when I was growing up, I think she was the only Asian American author I ever read. And it always boggles my mind because if you look beyond 20 plus years, you are not seeing any Asian American, much less third world author, who are getting their bo books published. Um, and I remember reading her in high school and just being kind of blown away by the fact that she took all these Chinese myths about women and wrote about them and that we were fortunate enough to have that book in our high school or else, and I think it, it really shaped my life in the sense that for the first time I realized that you could write about that. You know, that you could go back in time and write about women in history or Chinese women in history who made a difference. Um, and I think that even subconsciously kind of set me on that path, even though I didn't realize then. I'd say a lot of the physics books really influenced me and, and I'm sure the nation, um, like Hawking's A Brief History of Time and, and those books. Um, I think it started to take large concepts, difficult concepts to grasp, um, and people didn't necessarily the authors didn't talk down to the reader, but explained difficult uh, concepts in, in ways that we also could understand. And uh, it was exciting. I think it's exciting. It's an exciting field, and I'm excited that I'm able to read books like that. Um, I have access to books like that. Um, in my own life, I have to say, I think Bukowski books, which is an odd thing for a 12-year-old girl to like, but... I really liked Bukowski because he was very honest, and even though I didn't want to grow up to be an alcoholic <laughs> postal writer, uh, I still really enjoyed his writing. I pr appreciated his bravery and his courage and just being honest and showing his ugliness as well as his hopes for being heroic in his own way, uh, and it made me feel less odd. Uh, I felt like I was able to be flawed and it was okay. Goodness, uh, one of the books I would say uh, really influenced me when I was growing up uh, are books of autobiographies and memoirs and things like that that I really enjoyed uh, reading people's lives uh, their life story um, it's hard to pick one but I would say my my childhood favorite and this is this is not uh, nonfiction but R.L. Stein was uh, a huge um, a huge reading that I did when I was younger with the goosebumps um, and so the thriller thriller books are something that I really, really enjoyed, and uh, that's, that's part of my childhood, so I'm really, really in love with those books. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.